CataractCoach.com, Cataract Quiz. How do you deal with this trapped air bubble? And our guest surgeon is Dr. Xiao Gong Wang from China. So traumatic cataract, you see there's the white cataract. Capsurex is being done, nucleus is soft, so it's easily aspirated. Now look what happens when the IA probe is placed in the eye. The lines weren't cleared, so air, air bubble is injected in the eye, a large air bubble. Now that air bubble went into the vitreous cavity. It went through an area of zonular weakness. This is a 40-year-old patient who had a traumatic cataract. So now we can fill up the capsular bag with viscoelastic and implant the lens, but how do you get out that big air bubble? That's a good question. So here's cleaning it up, and with the infusion pressure of the IA probe, the air bubble is pushed to the side, but can you leave the air bubble in the eye? Well, certainly retina surgeons leave a big air bubble inside the eye in the vitreous cavity, but the catch here is that this air bubble is going to displace the IOL. So let me show you what happens here. So filling the eye with viscoelastic is the next step. There's the viscoelastic, and you can push the air bubble to the side, but it's still there in the vitreous cavity. Now the IOL is going to be inserted, and this is a three-piece lens that's going in the capsule bag. First haptic goes in, there's the optic, and it can be dialed in. So what are the options now to remove the air bubble? You could leave it be, but what's going to happen when we take the viscoelastic out of the eye? When we move this viscoelastic from the eye, the air bubble is going to come right back into position under the optic. So it's going to push the IOL around. Now, it may not be too much of an issue once you get the patient off the OR table and the patient's upright, because then the air bubble will be pushing towards the superior part of the globe instead of pushing from behind the optic of the IOL. So another option is to remove the air bubble. So how should you remove it? Now, probably the easiest choice to remove it is to go with a pars plana approach. Use a small 30-gauge or 27-gauge needle through the pars plana and then aspirate this out. We're used to injecting through pars plana for all these anti-VEGF or intravitreal injections, so it's not that big of a deal. So in this case, though, the surgeon is going to try to go behind the IOL and use a needle to pierce the posterior capsule to access that air bubble. And of course, the risk here is you're going to intentionally open up the posterior capsule, and a small opening in the posterior capsule tends to become a large one. So unless you can create a primary posterior capsular excess that's small in diameter, if you just create a puncture site, that's going to rip wide open. So again, we've got to be careful there. Now, how long would an air bubble last in the eye? You know, when retina surgeons operate and they fill uh, completely the vitreous cavity with a gas bubble, just room air, that tends to last about a week or so. Other gases that are used, C3F8 or SF6, they can last longer. But in this case, what we saw is just room air. The patient also has a history of angle recession from the trauma. And again, the anatomy is not normal here. So now here's the small gauge needle going behind the eye well to poke into the posterior capsule and then aspirate out most of that air bubble. There, it's out. But now the problem is, of course, when you put the eye probe in the eye with that high infusion, it rips the posterior capsule even more. So smart move now, the surgeons decided to bring the eye well out of the capsule bag and place the haptics in the sulcus. And I think that's a good move. That's going to give the patient better long-term stability. And the red lead is now rotated around and it'll be put into a good position. So again, the issue here is the patient has unusual anatomy. Patient had trauma, it's a traumatic cataract, a 40-year-old patient with a white cataract already gives us a warning that some other tissues in the eye may be weaker. And in this case, I suspect there was an area, area of zonular loss or zonular weakness. The second issue is the air bubbles. You have to train your technicians and your staff that they need to clear the air out of your instruments. You see, even the IA cannulas or the BSS 27-gauge cannula or the viscoelastic, all these can induce air bubbles. And so your technicians have to know to flush these out and give them to you with no air in the lines. This patient, I'm happy to tell you, had a very nice outcome and everything went beautifully. 
So I want to, talk, I want to thank Dr. Uh, Wong for his beautiful video, and I hope you learned a lot.